Hello and welcome back to the Coding Hub. In today's video we'll have a look at how uh, you can use your Chromebook to code. As the fastest growing desktop operating system, Chrome OS has started to mature and become an OS that is extremely versatile. What started as the Chrome browser only device has morphed into an operating system that has Linux, Android and progressive web applications baked in um, as, soon as, as soon as you open it. This has made Chrome OS one of the most enjoyable to use OS's uh, whilst having the power uh, to give power users a lot of uh, creativity and ability to use it for creative uh, purposes like creating apps, websites and other things um, with it. It's my personal choice uh, operating system. Uh, it's not perfect, however it, it does give you a lot of uh, versatility. And we will have a look at how we can use it. Um, but in case you want to get a Chromebook for yourself, uh, you can go over to the Google website uh, for Switch to Chromebook, uh, which gives you a, bit, a little bit more information about what sort of things Chrome OS can do for you, um, as well as uh, maybe some devices that you might enjoy using. Now, in this video, we will uh, have a look at the three different types of uh, applications that you can run on Chrome OS. Uh, so the first one is Android, uh, then we'll have a look at Linux, and uh, lastly, we'll have a look at progressive web apps, which are uh, containers uh, that run on, a, on the browser, and uh, they give you uh, a certain functionality. Now, um, when you first open a new Chrome uh, Chromebook or Chrome OS device, um, you will have the ability to add uh, Google Play, uh, the Google Play Store, which is uh, where you can download Android applications from, as well as, um, in this case, uh, Chrome OS applications. Not all applications uh, that you can install on your phone will run on, uh, on Chrome OS, however, the vast majority will, 99% of your uh, of your apps that run on your phone will run on Chrome OS. Some have been specifically adapted just for Chrome OS, so they might look different or behave differently depending on the type of device that you're running it on. However, if you go onto the search bar and search for something like an ID, an independent development environment, um, you will see that there is just so many options out there. Um, you know, stuff for coding in Python, uh, making uh, making websites, uh, Java development. Uh, one of my personal favorites that I actually have used quite a lot is AID, uh, which is a Android uh, development environment where you can actually code Android applications directly on your device. Um, and uh, this this application is honestly amazing. It, it has tutorials um, on how to code Android applications. Uh, in addition to that, it has IntelliSense, um, it has Git integration, it's honestly it's really good. It has um, a previewer of your um, Android layouts, as well as uh, it compiles the application locally without needing internet usage and um, it, yeah, it's just it's just really really good, and thoroughly recommend this, especially if you want to start coding Android applications on your device. Uh, there is a better way to do this on your Chromebook uh, if you if you decide to install Linux, but we'll have a look at that in a little while. Um, the other thing to look out for on Android is um, uh, there are there are things like. Um, Scratch. Um, so I know a lot of people, um, or a lot of children who have start have had to start learning from home, have um, have got Chromebooks uh, either either given to them from school or, or um, you know they're just cheap devices that you can that you can get your hands on. And one of the really cool things is uh, an application called Scratch, which um, is a um, an application that allows kids to start learning some of the logic behind coding. Um, so it, the idea is that you have this little cat here that you can tell it, you know, to move right, to to go up, to go down. And honestly, this application is, is great to for your kids to start learning how to make some of these small applications and start learning how to think 
uh, about problem solving and coding per se. So if we have a look at this project here that I um, started, you can actually just, um, you know, as you can see down here, you can you can create things and then and then run them. So for example, this is moving five to the right and uh, five up, and then you can you can kind of drag uh, a bit like a puzzle. Uh, and tell it to do different things. Um, so if we if we do that, and then as you can see, it goes up and down. And you can you can honestly make it do anything. Um, and it's and it's great. You can you can actually create little games on here, uh, like two player games. It's it's very versatile and amazing for kids to learn. Now in the second section, uh, we will look at Linux applications. Now, this is one of the areas that is um, a bit more um, still under construction, I guess, um, the best way to say it, uh, due to the fact that Linux is officially an open beta, uh, is what Google calls it. So anyone can install Linux on their Chromebook, but it's officially still in beta, which, um, you know, there might be some issues with it. I haven't had any issues, uh, but there's still many features being added to this. And the best thing about Linux, um, having Linux on your Chromebook is that you can install a lot of um, IDs um, on, on your device. So things like Android Studios, uh, which I have here already installed. Uh, so Android Studios is actually officially supported by Google on Chromebooks. So there, there's a there's a special version to install on Chromebooks for Android Studios. And you know, you can, it's exactly the same. You can, you have your, you have, um, you have IntelliSense, you have your, um, um, coding, uh, you know, structure is, is honestly amazing. It's really, really good. It's got Git integration uh, with uh, with all the different Git providers, and um, yeah, it's really good in terms of compiling and testing. You can actually connect your if you have an Android phone, you can connect it to your Chromebook and then directly build and test um, your application on onto the device. Uh, to do this, you have to uh, go on to manage USB devices once you've connected your Android phone, and then in there you can you can allow it to. Um, to get apps installed onto it. You may have to turn on developer tools on to your device. Um, the other option is if you haven't got an Android phone and you have uh, another operating system phone, you can click on develop Android apps and actually turn this on, which will directly install the Android app that you're developing on your Chromebook. Um, and it will run it as an Android app onto your Chromebook, just like the other Android apps that we were looking at, which is also amazing. I personally haven't done that just because I have a phone and it's uh, just a little bit quicker to to just compile and run on your on your phone, uh, but you, you have the option there if if um, if you need to. The other thing that I think um, most developers will be most excited about uh, when it comes to Android uh, to Linux on your Chromebook is Visual Studio Code. Um, the thing with Visual Studio Code is that um, it's probably the fastest growing ID out there. It's super versatile. You can install many different extensions to it and you can you can really make it your own for whatever you want to use. So it's it's amazing. Um, what you need to do is you, you head over to the Visual Studio Code uh, website. It will recognize that you're running Linux and it will offer you the Debian or the uh, Fedora the Red Hat uh, download version. What you need is the Debian one uh, because um, on a Chromebook, it's uh, the version of Linux that is installed is Debian. So once you've downloaded that, you can uh, you'll get it inside your downloads folder. You just literally double click it, and then it does a little bit of loading, and it even tells you what it's going to be installed, what version it is. You just click install, and then it will uh, do installation in progress. You just wait for that to finish, um, and then once it's finished, you can you can you can run it. Uh, so we'll just wait here for it to be installed. And 
and then the application is installed. So if we just have a look here and click on Linux apps, uh, it will put it inside a different folder and then you just click Visual Studio Code and it will open it up. And there you have it, if you just do the code. Uh, it's actually recognized uh, some of the code I've had open in here before, um, as, uh, as I had this installed previously, but I was um, I was just trying to demonstrate the installation process. But yeah, it only picks up the latest versions. It's, uh, it, it's amazing. You can install any different um, uh, extensions on it. Um, I have, you know, stuff for databases, uh, .NET Core, um, uh, C Sharp coding, uh, which is actually one of the things that's amazing for uh, for doing this on on your Chromebook. And yeah, it's just it's just super super good. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is actually um, uh, progressive web applications. So these are things in your browser that allow you to install um, the applications onto your Chromebook and actually not, not just Chromebook, but uh, other operating systems as well, like Windows have started to do it now. But let's say you go to youtube.com, uh, you, uh, well, let, let's try StackBlitz. Okay, I think it's because we're in an incognito window. So if we just open up a new window, go in here, and then let's select Angular application. So StackBlitz is um, an amazing application, which is a um, which is essentially Visual Studio Code in your browser. You will need internet connection, obviously, to run this, but you essentially have Visual Studio Code in the browser and you can just straight away start coding. It's got integration with GitHub. And I don't know if you can see this little button here, install stack blitz. But when you click that, you can install the progressive web application onto your Chrome uh, uh, Chromebook. Now, this is one example of what you can use, uh, stack blitz is thoroughly recommended, but what I personally actually use is uh, Cloud Shell. Cloud Shell is a, um, again, a Visual Studio Code, um, a Visual Studio Code application that um, runs in your browser and it's from Google Cloud. So if you already use Google Cloud, Cloud Shell is automatically built into um, your, uh, into the offering and it allows you to, um, straight away, uh, uh, clone repositories from your Google cloud repositories into this environment here and directly start coding. And it's, it's honestly amazing. It's super quick for making, uh, small changes on the go, um, because it's very low overhead once it starts running. Um, it's, yeah, it's super simple to use. Um, as you can see here, I've got uh, a, a test project that I'm running uh, locally. Um, but if I, for example, just decide to run it uh, in Cloud Shell, you, you, it will, uh, so this is a .NET Core application, which I've decided to run. And then if we just click uh, Web Preview, um, it will automatically start previewing this in, in, in the browser, which is uh, honestly um, amazing. <laughs> uh, this was something that wasn't really available to do um, two, three years ago. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really changed um, how you can do coding, especially, um, especially on some of these uh, lower performing Chromebooks that um, you know, um, don't have as much power to run some of these heavy IDs like Visual Studio Code and um, and um, and Android Studios. So this this really gives you a lot of versatility on what you can do on your Chromebook. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope 
um, you now have a better idea of the sort of things you can use in your Chromebook to code. And uh, I hope it will help you code in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next.